Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Align Your Mind with Jonathan and Alexa. We introduced ourselves in the last podcast, but if you haven't heard that yet, we'll do it again. So my name is Alexa, and I'm currently a senior in high school and will be an incoming freshman in the fall. And I got involved in Mindful Me through friends at school and just realizing that I wanted to make a difference in what I've been learning and help others learn the same thing I did, which really gave me a peace of mind. Similar to Alexa, my name is Jonathan, and I joined Mindful Me for the same reasons as Alexa, because we really wanted to share what we were learning because we thought it helped a lot of people more than just our small friend groups that we associated ourselves with at the time. Uh, I'm currently a junior in high school going into my senior year, and I'm looking forward to that. And I'm also looking forward to all the things Mindful Me is doing and have been planning while we've been stuck here in quarantine. We've been trying to make the best use of it. So we've actually went ahead and started planning our summits, which we're excited to invite you all once we have a date. The only thing that we're kind of waiting on is the location and the date for you guys to ensure that it'll be 100% safe for everyone to come gather with us. Basically, the summit is going to be a, it's going to be quite a bit of students that we're going to start off with. And we're going to do breakout sessions like aromatherapy, sound healing, and really learning what mindfulness is for you guys to bring back to your community and your school and things of that nature, because we really want to spread mindfulness and spread all the positivities that come with it. And then because we're all about spreading learning and resources, we're actually creating an online Canvas module for several schools to use and implement. And we're excited about that because, again, it's teaching what mindfulness is. And that's really why Mindful Me was created, to try to teach as much as we can and try to spread the mindful me and how to empty your glass as a group together and then additionally with that kind of goes hand in hand with the canvas module we're actually partnering to provide resources for broward county public schools we're doing this through the canvas modules as well as partnering with live sessions and a bunch of things like that and we're really looking forward to it uh, our group has been planning this module and we've been planning these live sessions to really interact with students teachers staff of all kinds of walks of life to really try to engage their mindfulness so they can make their everyday life better and see the little things that we tend to forget and pass by. And then Alexa and I have been personally reaching out to people to come and be featured on our podcast. We want you guys to hear more than just our two voices because more people bring new perspectives and new perspectives you can always learn. So if you guys want to actually be part of one of our podcasts, feel free to reach out to us through our Instagram at Mindful Me Inc. And we can't wait to have some future guests on our podcast in the upcoming weeks. And then, as you know, Align Your Mind is an original Mindful Me series. But if you haven't already checked out the two other original Mindful Me series, Need to Heed with Jake and Fernando and Mind Watch with Thomas and Dan, they're two really great podcast series, and you guys should definitely go check them out. And that's basically the update for Mindful Me and a little bit about ourselves. But of course, we want to hear how you guys have been doing through this whole quarantine. So feel free to DM us on Instagram or Twitter at Mindful Me Inc. yet again. And we really want to hear from you guys and reach back out to you. All right, so now let's get into Align Your Mind. So if you listened to our last episode of Align Your Mind, we talked about meditation. If you haven't listened, go ahead and check it out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. But for those of you who had listened and did tune in, we want to know if you've been trying it, if you've been seeing results, some things that were uncomfortable, some things that you've been able to overcome over doing it over and over again. So again, you can leave that on any of our posts. You can DM us. and You can even leave a comment on our website on our homepage. So, John, have you been doing your meditations, and if so, how, are they, how have they been? Well, just like before, um, I was practicing meditations kind of daily, and after we did the podcast, of course, Alexa and I do research before we film our podcast because we really want to make sure what we're giving you guys is scientifically proven and sound, and while we were doing the research, I kind of listened, and I kind of learned some tips that I started implementing as well, and I feel like my meditations have been becoming more meaningful and have been really all around more sound. So I hope that you guys, we kind of incorporated those tips in our last podcast, and I hope you guys are finding kind of the same results, whether you're starting or continuing meditations, that you just realize the more sound. 
And um, so let us know if they are through the venues of social media. But today we're going to focus, same on the mindfulness realm, of course, but we're going to focus specifically on the power of gratitude. So Alexa, can you explain why gratitude is important? Sure. So let's start with like the textbook definition of gratitude, which gratitude is the quality of being thankful, the readiness to show appreciation for it and to return kindness. But it's a lot deeper than that. So let's look into the power of gratitude. So gratitude is strongly consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive. They relish good experiences. It even improves health. Um, it helps deal with adversity and it even builds strong relationships. And science tells us that an attitude of gratitude is a good health choice. So being more grateful more often makes us happier and even more optimistic through any scope of life. But gratitude also adds to the bottom line in very real ways. And the best news about gratitude is that it requires a little time and no money. So Jonathan is going to tell you what those benefits are, physically, psychologically, and socially. Yeah, so not only does gratitude not cost any money, which of course is nice, but the benefits outweigh all the cons that you could even think of. Because you're not just getting benefits in your mind through higher levels of positive emotions. You're more alert, you're alive and awake. Most people feel more joy and pleasure and just simply more optimism and happiness. But gratitude digs deeper than that because you see physical and social emotions kind of increase. For socially, you feel more helpful, generous, and compassionate towards others. Most people feel more forgiving and more outgoing. And studies indicate that you actually tend to feel less lonely and isolated. And in a time like this, where everyone's kind of staying at home, it's really important to practice gratitude, especially if you're feeling lonely and isolated, because you can impact not only yourself, but those around you. And then physical, you actually create a stronger immune system. You feel less bothered by aches and pains. Your blood pressure actually tends to low, which as we saw with the trend with the meditation. And then your exercise, you'll be able to take better care of yourself because of your health. And your exercising would actually increase your stamina to actually complete them. And it'll actually help you sleep longer, which is always nice because you'll feel refreshed upon waking up. Now, gratitude, of course, is what we want. It's the universal law of attraction that says we will attract into our life things we tend to focus on. Everyone likes to feel thanked for and know that they're needed. And since this is true, wouldn't you want more of what you are thankful for? You have to remember that you're consciously aware of your blessings and that you tend to feel grateful for them. You're focusing more clearly on what you want to do in life and you are attracting more of those things in your life. So someone Jonathan and I look up to or look to when it comes to mindfulness says something very specific that our teacher constantly reminds us of. And it's the phrase, change one word, change your life. So for example, if you were to say, I can't do this, that's something negative that you're bringing into the universe and it's going to come back at you. Instead of saying can't, replace it with will. I will do this. Simply changing one word will change your whole perspective of what you're putting out into the universe because we know with the law of attraction, whatever you bring out or whatever you put out is what you're going to take back in. So you want to make sure that every single word that's going out into the universe is going to be a positive one. So in a time like this, when AP and ACE tests are coming up, instead of stressing and saying, oh my God, I can't do this, or I'm going to fail, change those words and say, I'm going to do this. I need to do this. I will pass this exam. Simply changing a word or a phrase will change your entire life. But I mentioned a few things that you can change, but remember that people express gratitude in multiple different ways. You can apply it to the past. You can retrieve positive memories and be thankful for them. Um, you can look to the present, not taking good fortune for granted as it comes. And the future, obviously, with maintaining a hopeful and optimistic attitude. Uh, so regardless of the inherent or current level of someone's gratitude, it's a quality that individuals can successfully cultivate further. So no matter how grateful you are in this current moment, you can always be more grateful. Now, 
research has shown us that gratitude unshackles us from toxic emotions. It helps even if you don't share it with anyone else. But the benefits take time and they actually have lasting effects on the brain. So it's obviously worth it, just as we looked at with meditations. And if you've been doing these meditations, you see how day after day, it's constantly making a more positive impact on your life, just as gratitude will. So Jonathan and I are going to give you a few ways that you can show gratitude. If you can simply write a thank you note, or you can thank someone mentally if you don't have time to write it down, just keeping in mind that they're doing something positive that's benefiting you, or if you do something positive for them, that's always something to be grateful for. And you can keep all of those things in a gratitude journal. Um, count your blessings. Every time something great happens, say, oh, wow, I'm thankful for that. Or, wow, that's something that's really going to change something in my life. And I'm really grateful that that happened. And another one is meditations. So again, in the last podcast, Jonathan and I talked about ways you can meditate and what to meditate about. If you're doing your little five minute meditation in the morning, maybe tomorrow your meditation is going to be about everything you're grateful for. Just slowly list out everything you're grateful for with your deep belly breathing and you'll come up with something that you didn't even think about before. Now this brings me to a challenge for you guys. We challenge you to keep a gratitude journal for the next month. Every day for the next month, you can write down one to three things that you're grateful for. Now, Jonathan and I did this previously, and we learned that in the beginning, it's a lot harder to come up with things that you're grateful for. But as you go, you'll realize that by the second week, you'll be able to list more than 10 things a day, which just shows you how much more receptive you are to positive things that are going on in your life. And that in itself will make a difference in your outlook. And now for a little more of a specific challenge. <clears throat> we challenge each and every one of you guys to complete an act of gratitude within the next five days. So for day one, which is today, we want you guys to think of a person who has helped you in your life. Now this may be a teacher, a friend, a parent, or a mentor. Now spend the next few minutes on that reflecting on the ways they have helped you and the benefits you have gained as a result. Then write them a heartfelt card. Call them or visit them with social distancing, of course, to tell them how their help has improved your life. If you're no longer in contact with them, go ahead and give them a call or a text or an email and give them that card anyway. And keep it to remind yourself to feel how grateful for you are for that person and how they have impacted your life positively. Now, secondly, we want you guys to just take a walk in the nature. As you do this, think about all the ways that nature helps us sustain life and feel happier and more comfortable around our surroundings. Focus on feeling grateful for the fresh air and water and the natural beauty of a flower and the peace of that ocean, the lakes or the mountains that nature may give you, or just the shade of a tree. Notice it around you guys and take it in and see what you're truly thankful for or with nature around us. And then three, think of somebody in your life who helps you on a daily or weekly basis. This could be a partner, a parent, a best friend, a boss, a teacher, it could be your babysitter, or it could be your pet. Spend around a few days observing and focusing on all the different ways in which they make your life happier or more comfortable. Make a plan to do something special for them and show your appreciation. And then four, as you sit down at dinner at night, think about the people who helped get this food to your table. This may include everyone from the farmer who grew the food to the workers who picked it from the crops, the drivers who transported it, the person who earned money to pay for it, the grocery store bagger who bagged it, or the person who cooked for it, and so on. Think about all the steps that it got to your table, and if you're thankful for any one of the people that made it to your table, who you're most thankful for, and who's the person you never thought of before. And then the last one that we want you guys to try is think about how you can live a life that conveys gratitude to the planet for all that we have. We tend to take things for granted, and this quarantine has brought that out more than ever. So try not to overuse water or electricity. Recycle. Try to look out for those sustainable products. Try to donate to charity, volunteer to help, 
everyone in your community. Try to work in an animal shelter or clean up a natural area. Now get involved in your community because living responsible and doing acts of service should help you feel good about your life and more aware of your connection to other living things. Now, after you complete each one of these, we want to know how you feel after. Because Alexa and I will be taking on this challenge with you guys for the next five days. Our next podcast will definitely be sure to check in. But if you guys want to let us know right away, feel free to DM us on our Instagram and Twitter at Mindful Meeting. And Alexa and I will tell you how we are doing our challenges as well. And we can't wait to hear you guys and see how you, you're doing with this challenge. And as you're doing this and checking up on our website and our social media pages, look out for the posts because every week mindfulme.org publishes a meditation on Meditation Monday and a podcast on Podcast Thursday. Next week, you can look forward to a meditation with Dan Katz and the next episode of Mind Watch with Dan and Thomas. All of our podcasts and meditations are not only on our website, but you can also find them on Spotify, Google Music, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. All you have to do is search mindful, mindful me with two L's in a space in between mindful and me. Also be sure to follow all of our social media at mindful me dot mindful me Inc full mindful with two L's on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you for listening to our second episode of align your mind, the power of gratitude. Always remember whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to hear from you guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Align Your Mind with Jonathan and Alexa. Be sure to visit mindfulme.org for videos, meditations, and podcasts just like this. You can also listen to Mindful Me resources on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and Google Podcasts by just searching Mindful Me. Mindful with two L's, space, M-E. We can't wait to see you on there. Be sure to visit our social media at Mindful Me Inc., to stay updated on the latest news and events. I hope you have a great rest of your day.